Hey YouTube, Mike here. Thanks for joining me for the first episode of Clearing the Cube Review. Today, I'm reviewing X-Men, Days of Future Past. In this 2014 addition to 20th Century Fox's widely successful X-Men franchise, the curtain rises on a dark dystopian future where mutants are hunted down and exterminated by incredibly sophisticated robots called Sentinels. The passion project of evil Tyrion Lannister. Not only can the Sentinels identify mutants, but they can also adopt specific mutant abilities, essentially rendering them unfucking stoppable After watching several of our favorite X-Men dismembered, disemboweled, and decapitated, then things look pretty fucked dark for mutankind. It's not good. However... Kitty Pride possesses a mutant capability or plot device that is so fucking complicated. They literally had to have Professor Xavier explain it to Wolverine so that the audience could wrap their head around it. What do you mean you were never there? She projects Bishop back in time a few days to warn the others of the coming attack. So she sends Bishop back in time? No, just his consciousness into his younger self, his younger body. Wow. Yeah, I'm with you, Wolverine. Lazy writing is lazy writing. Anyways, one day, Professor Xavier and his elite team of mutants show up. Fuck a storm, fucking Wolverine, fucking Magneto, motherfuckers, you know, the badasses. So they decide that they're gonna send Wolverine. Okay, whatever, fuck it. They're gonna send Wolverine back into the time, into the 70s, when love was free and drugs were cheap. Wolverine's primary objective in traveling back to the past is to prevent Mystique from assassinating Bolivard Trask, the man responsible for the creation of the Sentinel program. Professor Xavier claims that this event is what set in motion a chain of events that led to the fucked up crazy future that we see at the beginning of the movie. Despite the many obstacles and uh, the adversity placed before him, the Wolverine manages to uh, achieve his ultimate goal. Even though he ends up in the bottom of the Potomac River during the big action sequence at the end of the movie. You did it. Did what? Logan, don't you have a class to teach? Actually, I could use some help with that. Help with what? Pretty much everything after 1973. Things I liked! I, I, I like that Bishop showed up in this movie, but, I, you know, to be honest with you, I, I don't really see the point in it. Bishop doesn't do fuck all in this movie. He just, he just shows up so he can die, like this cavalcade of other awesome X-Men characters that they throw at you in the beginning of the movie. And all, all it does is, is hurt you in the field. I don't like watching some of my favorite X-Men get... It's sad. I'm sad now. I'll forgive most of the shitty moments with Jennifer Lawrence, who just... You're lovely. You're lovely, Jennifer. We... I, lo I like you. You're f physically capable of pulling off that whole mystique thing. It's, uh... It's hot. It's fucking hot. It's... I can't lie. It's fucking hot. What are you gonna do? But... If I see so much as a screw move, I will jam this into your throat. You got no chops, girl. You, 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 what, 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 what did you just say to him? How did you find me? You taught me well. It's been a long time since we were this close. Wow, I mean, for, you know, uh, a scene that's supposed to be between two lovers, you know, I, I, I totally believe that, uh, that Mystique is, uh, still in, uh, it, it, I, I don't know what you'd call that emotion she's exhibiting there, but it ain't love. I don't want a war. I'll forgive all of that shit because of this truly, truly fucking epic sequence with Quicksilver. This character is a ray of fucking sunshine in a movie that's otherwise, well, dark as fuck. Some heavy shit, man. He reminds the audience what it's like to enjoy the experience of discovering this universe of strange and awesome mutant powers. How do I know I can trust you? Sherman. Sure, Let's 
cool. It was disgusting. This sequence where the cops open fire on Xavier and Wolverine and Quicksilver just steps in and just, just pushes the bullet redirect and gives the dude a wedgie. That's all I gotta say. Quicksilver done stole this movie for me. It's, it's a movie. It should, it should just be called X-Men Days of Future Quicksilver. And they should just show this one scene over and over and over. It's, fucking, it's a great scene. I love this fucking scene. Some things I didn't much care for there, fellas. I, I think I kind of touched on this before. For some reason, it's it's Kitty Pride who has the plot device, mutant power, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I don't. She has the ability to send a person's consciousness back in time, and Kitty Pride is not. I don't, I don't know. You read the comics. I, I read the comics. Kitty Pryde, she's not. She's not psychic. She's not a psychic lady. She's, she's, she's known for doing this. She's, she slides through the things. She comes and she goes through the walls and the floors and the ceilings and stuff. She doesn't fucking touch people's heads with the hands and make the brains go back, forward, whatever. Fuck. It's why her. What, you're already reimagining this world. Make it Gene fucking Grey for all we fucking care. Do some shit. Some fuck. Fuck. God. She. Why? Huh? I, I read some shit or watched the YouTube video with some shit. Hearsay. This is all hearsay. I'm going on fucking rumors and shit here. Rumor has it that the original script called for Xavier to be the one who was able to transport his own consciousness back in time, which makes way more fucking sense. But also, in accomplishing this feat, his older self was supposed to be able to coach his younger self through this particularly taxing period of his life, having been abandoned by the woman he loved and his best friend. Self-empowerment over being empowered by others, I think, is far more in line with X-Men's overall moral of being yourself. And I believe focusing more on this theme would have connected better with longtime fans of the franchise. But I digress. They send Wolverine back in time. And their justification for this is because Patrick Stewart was too old. Which, all right, he's too old. Cast somebody else to play Xavier. He's, did he just say cast somebody else as Charles Xavier? You hold your fucking tongue. He's been playing Charles Xavier for 16 fucking years. You son of a bitch. I'll be goddamn. Come the fuck down. This is all about practicalities. This is about limitations. All right. Patrick Stewart isn't. Is, he's, a, he's an old man. He doesn't look it because he's got that whole. I don't know, fuck, he's eating babies or something. I don't fucking know. We could all strive to be like him. Maybe we just gotta eat more kale i don't so wolverine he's the vehicle he's how we experience the bulk of this movie from the moment he's sent back in time the audience is traveling with wolverine but that's the extent of his involvement in the story so w wolverine has no character development whatsoever he's he doesn't help xavier get past the whole mutant serum thing he doesn't do anything he's he's like one of us he's along for the ride wow Wolverine is one of the most iconic X-Men ever. Give him something the fuck to do other than fight bad guys. You know, they, they try to do something with the whole Striker introduction. But what comes of it? Another shitty origin story that we already know the punchline to? Oh, that's just great. Oh, that's so wonderful. Thank you so much for that. So I realize this this next section's gonna sound a little egotistical. This is what I what I would have changed. Just me personally, just some asshole talking to you on the internet for whatever the fuck that's worth. This is just my two cents on how I w w maybe would have changed the story just to make everything a little more compelling, relatable. Maybe a little bit less of a spectacle and maybe a little bit more cinematic. Seeing Xavier walking around during his introduction to this movie was not only surprising to Wolverine, it was fucking surprising to me considering where he was uh, at the end of the last movie. <laughs> It's bullshit.
You, you wrote it in there. If you didn't want him to be in the wheelchair in this fucking movie, you shouldn't have crippled him in the last movie. Uh, maybe when you're approaching this movie, we keep Xavier in the chair. Now, hear me out here. He's taken a shot with this magical serum that Hank has developed to suppress this mutant gene, this mutant ability. I have a better idea. Make Charles Xavier a heroin addict. Going along with that, you have a far more human struggle for your main character because you have the same motivations and the same problems. This is a man who's been brought low by the people who, who he thought were going to be there for him no matter what. It makes perfect sense that he would turn to drugs, alcohol, you know, whatever. Uh, something to drown out the voices. Ever since Christopher Nolan's Batman, I feel like comic book movies have been branching towards more dark and serious and, and human problems to try and relate these superhuman characters to the average Joe. You have a main character who is now struggling with a problem that anyone could really be facing. It's not a superhuman issue anymore. And it, it, it makes him more relatable. It makes the audience root for him more. It makes you give more of a shit about the story. So if we really must stick with the whole Wolverine gets sent back into the past, why not include a story arc for Wolverine about helping Charles get through this particularly taxing period in his life? And it gives all the more poignancy to Charles Xavier's words to him before he sends him back. You're going to have to do for me what I once did for you. Lead me, guide me. I was a very different man then. Well, let's show the audience just how fucking different he was. That's good cinema. That's good storytelling. That's... That's just my opinion. Thanks for watching this movie review. Stay tuned! I'm gonna review more stuff. John, stop me! <laughs> hey, YouTube! Thanks again for watching the first episode of Clearing the Q Review. If you like what you saw, stay tuned, because we got a lot more good shit coming your way. The theme song and all original music on this episode was written and recorded by my good friend Chuck Miller. And I'll have a link for you guys once he gets his shit together. I'll put it in the uh, video information down there, so keep an eye out for that shit too. Or don't. Fuck it. Like, comment, subscribe. Do whatever the fuck you want. I don't give a shit. It's YouTube!